What's up, gearheads? This is Toby with GearReport.com, here to bring you another review today. Today we're going to be talking about the Interordnance XP AK style shotgun. Full disclosure, Interordnance sent us an XP AK style shotgun and an XB bullpup style shotgun. Keep your eye on GearReport.com and to our YouTube channel for an upcoming review on that one. And also check out GearReport.com for the existing field strip video and article that we've got on that one. First things first, let's talk about some of the specs for this, this shotgun. Uh, the MSRP is, is $659.99. Now obviously you'll be able to pick it up for a little less, I'm sure, at your local gun shops. Uh, the weight on it is 10 pounds. The dimensions of it are 39.5 by 9 by 3 inches. It is a Saiga 12 style shotgun. And what I mean by that is, is, is it accepts Saiga style magazines. And we're going to talk about that a little later on. Uh, it is an AK platform shotgun. It breaks down in fun and, and um, looks on the inside similar to an AK as far as the gas and the uh, bolt carrier group. Um, it comes with... It comes with a gas adjustment plug on the front to be able to adjust the amount of gas that comes through the port out of the barrel down the, the gas tube. It comes with uh, two five-round OEM magazines. Not sure what brand those are. It comes with a cleaning kit. It comes with an out-of-the-box cleaning kit. Okay, brushes and a, a sock. It comes with two factory choke tube or barrel tubes. One of them is just a screw in extension tip. One of them is a, is a uh, recoil reduction adapter to where you can screw it in to the barrel and then you can unscrew the cap off of the end. Wow, that's really screwed all the way in there. Unscrew the cap off of the end and actually uh, put a recoil reduction device on there or some type of device for looks. It comes with a gas gas cap or gas tube adjustment tool. And it comes with five chokes. Now the website says stated that it comes with the on their website it states that it comes with three chokes in the box. So I'm not sure if that was just the one that we received for whatever reason or if 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 you do in fact get five chokes with that instead of just the three. Comes with a, a pretty good quality choke adjustment wrench or choke wrench and it comes with all the Allen wrenches you need in order to make the adjustments to take for example to, t to take loose the the uh, trigger group from the bolt or from the body from the frame. So out of the box that's what what it comes with right out of the box uh, and that's some of your your specs. All right, I want to talk about the box that this thing came in. I know that's an odd subject or an odd conversation to have but the box that this shotgun came in comes with a cut to fit foam insert and that cut to fit foam insert could very easily be put into a hard case of some type uh, and used for transportation to and from the range to give you a good finished professional quality look instead of having to if you buy a hard case instead of having to waste your pluck foam that comes with it or buy a, a foam cut a, a solid foam and then cut it to shape this one comes with a foam that you could actually use for that right out of the box so I think that's just a nice little bonus you know not here there to the good or the bad but to me that was a nice little bonus Let's talk about some of the test criteria and some of what we did with the with the shotgun. So when we were testing the shotgun to review it, we took it straight out of the box, didn't clean it, didn't grease it, didn't do anything to it. We took the factory grease, the factory setup, and just ran with it. Inner ordnance and all their documentation and their instruction manual suggests that you use high brass magnum loads to get the AK style, the XP AK style shotgun to cycle correctly and to work correctly. 
I may have broke that rule just a little bit and used cheap ammo all the way through it. This, some of the federal target loads, some Winchester stuff, just a lot of Walmart bulk ammo. May have broke some rules and ended up causing myself a lot more heartache on cycling and, and failure defeats and things like that. But there was also some other, um, other criteria that I, I, I used in order to get the shotgun to where I needed it to be. Right out of the box, that's actually a pretty good idea to get it to, to get through that initial break-in period of time. But you're going to see a clip at the end of this video or at the end of this review where I use Super Sport, the Estate Cartridge ECI Super Sport Competition Target Load, 12 gauge, two and three quarter, one ounce only, seven and a half shot. This stuff uh, and and run through a few magazines, and you're going to see how it works uh, after all of the testing criteria and after after the break-in period on the shotgun and after all the information that I'm going to be sharing with you here in this video. We shot roughly six, seven hundred, I mean we lost count of how many shotgun shells of varying types, whether anything from, you know, game and target load to double alt, triple alt, low brass tactical loads, slugs, uh, just the full range of shotgun shells and we just mixed it up with no rhyme or reason to it, except of course when we were doing things such as shooting clays on the target. We also took closer to completion of the testing and cycled the rifle around 12 or 1300 times, just sit there and cycled it to try to work out some of the machine burrs and try to get off, you know, make it smooth, make it run smoother. Um, we'll splice in some video at the end of, of how that resulted and after we cleaned it, because then we then cleaned it with just spray brake cleaner, spray can of brake cleaner, and then lubed it with a, a full synthetic uh, grease, not a gun oil or gun grease of any kind, just a full synthetic grease uh, to see if we could get this thing to run just as smooth as we could possibly get it to run. So from a testing criteria perspective, we we're really pretty hard on this thing. I mean, to be honest, it was most of you out there who spend six, seven hundred dollars for a shotgun probably wouldn't treat it quite like we did. Speaking back to the fact that we're not biased in our opinions because we didn't pay for it. You know, it gives us the freedom to be able to do the kinds of things that you may or may not be willing to do. During our testing, we made a point to test patterning with all of the different choke tubes that came with it uh, so that you could have a good solid picture and idea of what each one of those tips did. Anything from the, the long for looks to the threaded for to the threaded one for adding in muzzle rise to the choke one, two, three, four, and five. We wanted to give you an idea of what the pattern was. Now the patterning that we did was with target load and it was only at um, seven yards, so 21 feet, it wasn't, it wasn't a great distance. Uh, and obviously we weren't aiming for accuracy, we were just aiming to give you guys an idea what the pattern was uh, and throw on the shotgun. Uh, after the patterning, we pretty much stuck with the, the one choke, number one choke for the rest of all the testing we did, uh, just to keep a good tight pattern for what we were doing. We tested all the different magazines. So on the website and in the specs, it claims it'll take the Saiga 12, Saiga 12 style 12, ga 12 gauge magazines. It's a tongue twister there. Um, so I won't say we tested all of the magazines comprehensively by any stretch of the imagination, but what we did test was the SGM tactical 10 round and we tested the Pro Mag 10 round 12 gauge shotgun as well as of course the OEM. We had several of those. A um, Couple things to note about them. Uh, the, all of them, regardless of whether it was Pro Mag or whether it was aftermarket or OEM, as you're seeding the rounds, we found that you push them back and you think they're seated, then when you go to seat the next round, you have to actually seat it in and then there's a click, an audible click. Let me get it closer to the microphone. An audible click where it's like there's another depth or channel in the back of the magazine that you had to seat those into. So we found that regardless of which style of magazine it was, it would feed much, much better if you took that extra second as you were feeding to get it in there and then click it in. Make sure that it's seated back to the rear. And again, that was all the different magazines. Um, all the magazines fed just fine. Uh, to be honest, we actually had... Uh, towards the end had more feed issues with the OEM magazines than we did with the two aftermarket magazines. 
Uh, that said, though, the aftermarket magazines, you didn't just take them out of the box and shove them into the shotgun. Didn't quite work that easily, unfortunately. <laughs> we, we had to do some machining, uh, or well, some, some backyard machining or, or whatever, uh, to get these things to work. So, for example, on the SGM, it was fitting extremely snugly in the back of the, when you rocked it in. So as we were going into the shotgun, as you rocked it in, it would get right here and you would just have to shove it in and then it wouldn't come out very good. So what we had to do for that one is we had to dremel down the sides of the top of the feed lip to get it to work. But then it worked. I mean, it worked flawlessly. We was able to go through 10, boom, 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 just fast as we could. Bing, bang, boom, done. Uh, the Pro Mag, its challenge was that there was a lip right above this ledge, a physical lip right here, that impeded it from seating perfectly correctly. So when it got to right here, it wouldn't lock on the locking lug for the magazine because it couldn't get up far enough to the frame. So once I dremeled that off, it just locks right in and fits just like you'd expect it to. <clears throat> so the Saiga 12 magazines do work, but they do not work directly out of the box. You actually have to do a little bit of, uh, give them a little bit of, of uh, a little bit of, a little bit of work to get them to, to fit. So let's talk about how the magazines actually fed overall and how the, the, the shotgun cycled and functioned. So as you can imagine, and as you're going to see in some of these videos that I'll splice in, we had malfunctions galore. I mean, there were left and right problems were happening. Um, multiple different reasons. You know, it, it, part of it was initial break-in period on the shotgun where it was getting all the machining burrs and rubbing off all of the, uh, getting the, the, uh, the coating off and getting it back down to the bare metal and getting it to slide and getting that, the machining burrs off of it and getting it to operate smoothly. Part of it was just having cheap, crappy bulk ammo that the shotgun didn't necessarily like. Part of it was the seating that we talked about with the magazine for pushing it back until it clicks. Part of it was, was in the machining on the inside of the breech end of the barrel right up in the action there. That definitely needs some fluff and buff work. And we're going to talk about that here in a little while. But what that would cause is a crush feed to where it would, would on occasion, randomly crush the shotgun shells up into the barrel and cause cause it to see you know cause it to cease it wouldn't work it wouldn't push forward and and, uh, and work so you know overall right out of the box the the shotgun didn't work just flawlessly perfectly like a performance semi-automatic shotgun that you'd expect now that said this isn't a semi-automatic performance shotgun this is an ak style shotgun so those of you out there in the community who are watching this video probably already know that those types of things are a consideration with every brand of AK style uh, shotgun. That's that's the break-in periods, the 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 greasing and lubrication, uh, the gas tube adjustment. The those kinds of points are are pretty much just synonymous with the AK shotgun world. So no shock and no surprise to you. All right. So let's talk about some of the pros and some of the things we really liked about the shotgun. Uh, obviously, it has a really good feel. From a tactical standpoint, it seats well. It feels good. It, it feels exactly like and operates roughly exactly exactly like an AK-47. Uh, it breaks down and cleans exactly like an AK-47. We threw this thing on the ground. We tossed it around. We kicked it. We got dirt in it. We really ran it, uh, and it, it just kept functioning. It did not give us any problems whatsoever. Um, we like the fact that the gas tube adjustment is out in plain sight and easy to get to. That was a nice touch because that is a factor when you're when you're adjusting for the different types of load that you're going to be using, uh, different types of shells and the shell loads that you're using. Sometimes you have to adjust that gas block on a lot of a lot of shotguns or a lot of AK style shotguns to get it to feed correctly. Uh, we did not test a performance kit in it, a performance plug, a performance spring, uh, any of the performance parts. Uh, we intend to do that at a later date, uh, but we, have, we did not do it for this because we wanted to do a full out-of-the-box review on this thing. So keep an eye on our website or keep an eye on our website and our YouTube channel. And we'll try to get that to you in the foreseeable future when I get a little extra money to blow on getting those parts. So another couple things that we liked about this thing right out of the box was the trigger reset. So I know that may sound a little odd and like just something elementary or rudimentary, but the fact that it has...
full trigger reset, just like any other rifle would have, was a bonus for us. Now, I know in the shotgun world, when you're shooting trap and you're shooting, you know, you're, you're going through some of the, the full-blown official training classes, on um, shotguns, it's one of the few things that you're theoretically not supposed to do trigger reset for. You're supposed to come off the trigger completely and kind of get into it. Um, that said, though, some of the, the drills we were running were more of a um, you know, room entry or a tactical nature. Uh, and so the trigger reset gave us the ability to give, to give quicker, quicker shots on target and get back down and get back on. And so that was a nice touch for us. We were really impressed with the fact that even though we didn't clean it, and even though we ran through tons of ammo, and you could see clearly metal shavings in there, you could see, you know, from the machining, wearing off the machining and break-in period, even though all that was going on, this thing, just the more we kept feeding it, the better it kept working, the better it kept shooting, uh, just overall better, better, better. It just kept getting better every day, uh, no matter what we did to it. So in true AK fashion, <laughs> she, she's a tank. Another pro and positive about this thing is the, the, the bolt hold open the spot where the bolt hold opens at. It's in a really good position right here next to the trigger guard so that you didn't have to remove your trigger control hand from the pistol grip and the trigger group. You could just go over or under and just simply reach up with, with your firing finger, although that did put it dangerously close to the dangerously close to the trigger, you know, or pull off and use your middle finger or a different finger on your hand to be able to, to utilize the bolt hold open feature. Now again, that leads us into a couple of cons. Even though that's in a really good spot for quick reloads and quick control and manipulation of the shotgun, it's also a negative in a couple of ways. Number one is I just literally just mentioned that puts your finger dangerously close to being inside the trigger and near the trigger uh, for accidental discharge. Okay, So that's something you have to be aware of and train with. And as we all know, you know under stress situations, your, your fine motor skills tend to, to dissipate or disappear or go away. So that could end up being an issue. But I'll tell you another little side thing I did notice. When I first started running the gun before I got used to it and got used to the control, I was having issue on the recoil of the fact of, of it just biting into and kind of digging into my finger a little bit because there's slightly sharper edges on that <clears throat> bolt hold open lever. It, it was kind of digging into my finger. So in the very early stages, it actually turned out to be a con. So the, the position and the function of, of the bolt hold open lever is actually a pro and a con, both at the same time. Uh, some of the other cons and some of the other issues and concerns we had with it was that roughness of the, the breach and the deformation of the shells, that crushed shell problem we were having. Um, I really think that with just a very minimal, and I'm going to do a fluff and buff on this thing. Uh, I just didn't want to do it for this review because I didn't want to. I didn't want to get into you know gunsmithing on a, on a firearm for a review. I wanted to give it just a natural out of the box what you the consumer is going to see uh, review uh, right out of the box. So I really think there's an opportunity there for inner ordnance to do some quality control checks or some slot modifications to the machining and, and uh, manufacturing process to where they could take that breached opening and they could actually machine off the rough and sharp edges of it that would make those crush errors much less frequent and it would make the feed of the shotgun shells go up in much better. And again, those of you out there in the AK world know that this is this is pretty common. You know, that's on a lot of the AK style platform shotguns. But I think that that's a failing on all of them's part. I mean, it's a pretty simple fix. Well, me saying that from a consumer perspective, not a manufacturing perspective internationally, of course, it seems to me like that's a pretty simple fix is to machine those edges off uh, during the manufacturing processes to make that change and they would just feed naturally better. Another negative, potential negative, is limp wristing. So I know that limp wristing isn't necessarily a thing with, with shotguns. I mean, oh, it's, it's gonna kick me and hurt my shoulder. Oh, is it gonna hurt? Yeah, yeah, it's probably gonna hurt. I mean, particularly after you put like quite a few rounds through it, like 25, two 10 rounders and a five round, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt. So I know limp wristing is not necessarily a thing, but it is a thing with this shotgun. So I noticed that anyone who was shooting the firearm, including myself, a couple days when my shoulder was getting a little, little worn from shooting it, if you don't put your full, full cheek weld, full shoulder weld, proper stance, lean into it and give it your all, and you kind of limp wrist the shotgun, it tends to fail to feed, it tends to fail to cycle, just like some of your, your pistols will um, and so that, that ended up being a con. Now, is that a con for the shotgun? Or is that user error? Or different loads in shotgun shells? Truthfully, probably me 
my peers, you know, the guys who are out there shooting and stuff, probably our fault and we should have learned from that. Um, but that said, it's just something to be aware of. Pro, con, love it, hate it, whatever. You need to be aware of that because in your perception, when you spend that kind of money on a shotgun, if you're then wondering why it's failing to cycle the next one in, it may not be necessarily the shotgun, it may be you. That said though, there is something to be said about remo removing those machining burrs and superior cleaning and lubrication for that to make it cycle as smoothly as it possibly can to even succeed in those next, next shell pickups even in the event that you're limp resting it. So con, user error, you be the judge. Who knows? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run three mags through it just semi fast as we can to see how it plays out. We're gonna run the OEM mag, the SGM mag, and the Pro mag, and we're just gonna see how they go. So uh, let's see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? Particularly when you're out here trying to, you know, cut more lumber. Gotta have firewood, bro. All right, this is the OEM mag, five shots. Oh, so that's one of the um, shove feed problems where it, it uh, malformed the case by not going into the feed ramp correctly. So that was not a magazine failure per se. Now let's do the SGM mag. See how that works out. But that was a feed problem and that's where I talked about that the ramp needs to be fluffed and buffed for sure. All right, this is the SGM 10 round. Flawless. Pro mag. I think that speaks for itself. So the bottom line, would I buy one? Would I trust my life to it? Would I trust my wife and children's life to it? That's pretty much what you're thinking. Is this going to be the one that you keep beside the bed for the bump in the night? So here's the deal. Would I buy one? Absolutely. I would certainly spend my money on something like this, either just as a, a fun range gun, as a, a three gun competition shotgun, as a, even a clay shooter. Um, at reasonable distances. I wouldn't do it in true, true state level or regional level competitions, but just to have a little fun popping clays, absolutely. Would I trust my family's life with it? Not out of the box, not at all. If and when I had worked out all of the machining burrs, had mastered what loads and shells that it preferred to eat on a very regular basis, had tested significantly with hundreds of rounds and identified which magazines worked best and most dependable in it. And once I had done a full fluff and buff on the chamber, maybe even put in some aftermarket performance parts like performance gas plugs, performance springs, performance triggers, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Sure, maybe. Um, I'm not there yet, so I can't, I can't give you that full assessment because I haven't done all those modifications I'm talking about. But I can say with certainty and a good conscience that it's on the way there. So everything we've talked about, uh, the working off the machining, cleaning with brake cleaner and, and putting on you know, uh, commercial grade, high temp grease, cycling it, et cetera, et cetera, it is getting more and more and more dependable every time I shoot this thing. Now, have I got 20,000 rounds through it, 5,000 rounds, 10,000? Not yet. I mean, I'm just shy of 1,000 at the moment. I'm a couple hundred shy of 1,000. By the time I get some of these performance parts and post up a review or uh, an article about that, probably have a couple thousand in it. And then I'll be able to give you a better assessment. But for right now, I would not trust it straight out of the box for my family's life. All right, gearheads, thank you so much for everything you do in supporting our, our channel and our website. We truly value you as our end consumer of this digital content. 
We try to do everything we can to make sure that we provide you quality reviews and quality content. So if you would be so kind as to reciprocate the favor, like, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, interact with us, check us out at gearport.com, like us on Facebook, keep track of us on GunStreamer and YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere we are and have a digital presence. Give us that love by following us and keeping track of us so that we can continue to bring you this content and continue to give you some kind of useful information, maybe by somebody else other than me. So until we see you at the range, you keep living your dream. Thank you.